today we're gonna start um, working on these pocket pals i'm not gonna lie i tried to make this video a couple of times but for some reason i was having um an issue not with the stamps or anything like that just with my colors i just i wasn't happy with it so you know how it is if you're not happy with something you gotta just keep trying until you are <laughs> anyway now these are the pocket pals from ldrs i bought these on hsn and they were on clearance and i checked and they they still have some available at least i know this said they do they do so um we're gonna start with um the stamp the main stamp which is the teapot let me just put those to the side and um i chose some colors they're more in the vintage blend just to see how i feel about them even if i don't like it i'm trying I'm gonna try to complete this video because i gotta finish it <laughs> So we're going to stamp it. I'm, I'm using the um, Spectrum Noir black ink, the, the alcohol proof ink. But you can use Memento if you have it or one of the hybrid inks that will work with um, alcohol inks. This is just what I have. You hear the thunder? Oh, my lights don't go out. okay so we're just gonna stamp this a second time these stamps are photopolymer stamps and and they stamp beautifully they really do even if you press hard like i am now you still get pretty lines and i think i'm just gonna leave it like that i think it's good enough put that to the side and we're going to use my um, tri-blend markers for this. Let me just cut this down a little bit. Just can maneuver it a little better. Um, I think I'm going to do the teapot in the antique pink. And I'm going to start off with the lightest color. And just blend it all out with the mid and dark tones. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you guys watch me a couple of times, you, you're already familiar how I, I do this. I'm not saying it's the right way of doing it. It's just the way that works for me. And um, the more you practice with your alcohol markers, you'll find... Um, what works best for you and that's that's always going to be your best bet and let's put some down here i'm going to do this part on on um the camera then i'll pause and color the rest so i don't bore you guys too much with all this coloring and try to make this um video as short as possible these videos can take longer because there's a whole lot of little stamps and stuff and details that go to making the scene for it let's blend that in And then we're going to come up to light soon. So that's what we have. I'm going to do the rest of the teapot in this color, the antique pink um, tri-blend. And then I'll come back and we'll select another color for the other pieces. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. So we have the pot painted and, and now i'm gonna go with the vintage blue blend and we're gonna do the same technique we're gonna start off with our um darkest tone i mean lightest tone and let's fill in things from there a darker tone 
And I know most people will want to color this in like a really bright and cheerful color. But, um, I don't know. Today I just feel like, um, doing a little more vintage. Let's do this part. And then we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to come in with our darkest blends and just blend everything out. And the, the reason I do a lot of this coloring is because I, I, I know when I first started using these markers, I was very dis... I don't know. I just I didn't feel that I would ever get a good blend, and I just want you to see that if you just keep on, just with repetition, um, you start getting a better coloring of things, and you'll understand the way they work a little better, and it just it'll become fun. Let's blend that out. And then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to pause and just do this other part. Um, and maybe the rim. And then we'll come back and see what else we're going to add to it. Okay. Be right back. Okay. So now I think I'm going to go come back in with a burnt orange. And I'm going to do all the doors um, and the window in a burnt orange. And I guess you just have to decide if you're going to do the door and the frame in orange or are you going to come back and um, do some of the blue inside also. Which I might do the blue. See, not perfect at all. Even a scribble. But that's okay, because, I mean, when you look at things in real life, they have shadows and stuff. Nothing is the full color all the way around, unless you're looking at something this flat. Anything with dimension, you're going to have shadows. Mid tone. And then we'll come back with our light color. And if you see where I didn't add color in the beginning, it's a little bit lighter than everywhere else, which that's good. Gives the door a little more character. And then we'll just let it dry and see if we want to add anything else to it. Okay, I'm going to come back with the blue again and go around the door. Just to break up the color a little bit. And then, of course, we're going to add some dimension there also.
Admitted. And then come back in with the light tone. Okay. So we're going to go and do the same thing with the window and I'll be right back when that's done. Okay, so we have all the blue done, all the orange done, well, at least for now. And now we have to decide what we're going to do with our staircase. Now, um, I would have done it a brown, but uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to go with um, maybe a brown gray. Or should I do the same or burnt orange? Maybe the burnt orange. I don't want to add too many colors. Someone is at the front door. Okay, I'm going to have to pause this for a second. My doorbell just rang. Okay, we're back. Um, the stairs are done, and now we're going to start painting the house. And we're going to do that in the dusty purple blend. Just to keep it all kind of in muted colors. And we're just going to do the same thing we've done with all of the rest of it. Just add color. That's all. That's as simple as it gets. Be careful around the flowers. Uh, just because you just want to add little dots of green here and there and whatever color you want your flowers to be. And now we're going to come with the darker purple. Just be a little careful around these small edges. You can always come back and touch it up, but I mean, if you don't have to. Okay, I'm gonna go with the mid-tone now. And the wonderful thing is if you don't like it, you can just come back and add some more color to it. And let's finish it off with the lightest tone. Okay. And I think we're good there. Just let it, um, all the alcohol evaporate and then you can come back and add whatever you think it's missing. So, um, I wanted to keep this white, the trims, but we're going to add just a little bit of color to it. Uh, so it stands out a little bit more. I, I'm going to find a color and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have a light gray. Um, it's the IG1, Ice Gray 1. And that's what I'm going to use just to give us a little bit of shadow. And then I'm going to blend it out a little bit so it just looks white and not gray. And just... Add some color. And then, of course, we're going to come back and just soften it up a little bit. It's very light, but um, I still don't, I just wanted to have a soft blend. 
just so it looks white. So you see it's just a little bit tint, a little bit of tint, that's it. And if you think this spots with too much color, you can take some away with the blender pen. When it um when it evaporates, then you'll be able to see the color a little better. Okay. And we're going to do the same. Well, actually, no, I think down there we'll go with the, oh no. Let's just go for it. So we're just adding a little bit of color. And we'll see what we do with the rest of this. Okay. I'm blowing that out a little bit. Open it up. I think we're good to go there. And for this little guy, I'm just going to paint it green. I think here we could just add a pop of color. And just do the same thing that we've been doing all along. Add some color. And then you have to decide what color you want your flowers. I think I'm going to do mine. Um, Maybe a bright pink. Uh, let's see if this one is brighter. Yeah, I think that one stands out more. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing here. Actually, here I think we're going to make them yellow. Let's do a light yellow. Okay, and then finally, we're going to go with the mid-tone and just do the little leaves. Nothing perfect. Okay. So that's what we have pretty cute so far and we have to decide what color we're gonna do that trim i think i'm just gonna add a little bit a touch of pink maybe in this case go a little bit crazy what is that I think I let a little bug in when I picked up my Amazon package. <laughs> oh, great. Don't worry too much if you get inside here because um, those little windows get cut out when you run it through with a die. So it really doesn't matter if it, it's um, if you go into that. All that gets removed, which is good because these lines are pretty fine. Okay, all right. So I think we're good. Um, I think we're ready to send it to cut. As soon as I just um, add a little bit of color here. 
Okay, so we're going to send it through the die cutting machine and we're going to do that using. Oops, this die. Now, this die cuts out the not only the teapot, but it also cuts out the the windows and it opens up the door, which is pretty darn cute. Right, gotta get this out. So you see it, it makes the cuts for the windows and it also makes the cut for the door. So I'm just going to set that up. I'm going to cut it out and then I'll be right back. Okay, so it's cut out and we're just going to pop those little things out. So I said that wasn't so important that you to you, you be careful with the coloring here because all this gets removed and then your little door will pop open too. Look how cute that is. And so will the windows. Um, but before I, I open those up, I'm going to add a little bit of glossy accents if I can get it to work today. Okay, just give me a second. I, I need to find a needle to get this thing going. Okay, so we got it working again. <laughs> okay, so we're going to add glossy accents to whatever we think should be shiny. And of course, since it's a teapot, and most of this is going to be shiny, but we're going to start off just here. And I'm doing this now so it has enough time to dry while we cut out and color all the little pieces that go um, with it, all the little pals, the little berries and stuff that you can put in it. So we're just going to fill in all of this. And see how far it goes before I run out. Okay, I'm going to finish this off screen because I'm giving, giving me a hard time again. And let me see, hold on. Okay, yeah. Let me try to fix it. Okay, so we were able to get that thing going again. Jeez. Just problem after problem. <laughs> but that's okay. I'll just keep going. And now I'm going to add some sparkle because, you know, hey, it's fairy, so we got to have some sparkle. And I'm just putting dots everywhere. Not really being too careful. Just to add a little bit of shine. And then maybe some here. And a little bit on the bottom. Okay. I think that's good enough. And now we just got to have um, this little guy dry. Maybe just add a little bit of grass. Go into the grass. Just a little bit. 
And I think we're good to go. It's just one more thing. Uh, this is the dark tone. Okay. All right, I think we're good there. Um, so I'm gonna clean this up and then bring bring the the fairies out, and then maybe we can cut out some fairies. Okay, be right back. So I went ahead and cut out and colored all the little pieces, and now we just have to figure out how we want to um, continue with the card. What kind of card do we want to make? Do we want to make just a plain card or do we want to do an easel card? Now, and I made one of these before and I made it out of an easel card. Um, and it was because it was too cute to um, not display. So I think we're just going to do that again. And that way I can also explain how I, how I did it. So I have these circle dies. And I just chose um, two different sizes in order to make my base and also my layer. Um, I think we're going to go with these two sizes. Uh, one is, let's see. About almost five inches. It's like... Yeah, I would say about five inches. And the other one is four and a half. Okay. So we're going to use these two. And what I'm going to do is that the larger die is going to be my card base. And then this is just going to be my layering piece. Um, so let's get um, a card base. And let's get that going. So the way we're going to do our card base is just, I'm just going to pour this in half. So it's 11 inches, so I'm going to score it at five and a half. And we're just going to fold it. Score well, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect because it's going to get cut anyway. Put that to the side. And of course, in order to get the first um, base done, we have to hang this off a little bit. And that's just so it creates um, a card that stays together. If you were to do this, the card would come apart. So we're going to hang it off a little bit off our edge. And then we're going to cut our first um, card with that. All right, I'm going to cut it and I'll be right back. Okay, so we cut our base out and we also cut out um, a circle that's going to hold part of our um, easel when, once we fold it. But um, let me make sure I have the right side. No. Okay, this is the right one. Okay, so we're going to cut out a part that goes, um, just some shine, right? But I don't want to waste all this glitter paper. So I'm going to take another one of my dies and just put it in the center. That way I could salvage that piece. And of course, I'm just going to try to bring it to the edge. And maybe just about there. I'll tape it down. Let's see. And I'm going to try to carefully run it through my machine. Again, this is just to, to conserve some of the glitter paper because, hey, that's a cost. Put that out. All those cracks are normal in these machines. So as you can see, now we have um, this, so we can use it on this project or a different project. And then we have the piece that we're going to use to glue on here. 
and then we have to decide um what layer we're going to place on top of this if we're gonna ink our our background which i might just do so i'm going to cut um another piece and maybe let's see maybe this size out of my white card stock and then um we can ink it and make like a sky so so um it could look a little more more natural well not natural but you know what i mean i don't have any any paper that looks like a pretty sky where you know fairies will crawl up so we got that cut and we just got to see now where it's going to fall with this guy is it going to go in the middle but it just leaves a small border which is great which is exactly what i wanted and then of course now we would have our um teapot there and then we could build the scene around that. I think it's going to look super cute, especially when it's all inked up. Okay, so let's get to some inking. I'm just going to use this piece of cardstock that I have. I don't want to break out anything else. And then we're just going to pick some colors that will look good as our background. Uh, we're going to use some mustard. And let me just find a, a blue that we can use for the sky. I'll be right back. Okay, so I picked um, yellow, uh, blue, and some purple. Now, I'm going to start off with the purple. And the reason I'm going to start on oh, maybe not. I'm going to start off with the yellow instead. Because I want the inside of the windows to be yellow so we're gonna just put this here and see about where it goes so just just about there and we're just gonna color around we honestly don't even need the purple which i might not even use it I might just go right into the blue. Let's see. We already have blue on it, so how much I can use. And then of course, once you go into the yellow, it turns a pretty shade of green. So we can just put this here and see where we're at. And I think that's pretty good. Okay. Put these guys away. And then we're going to find some green paper to make grass. And um, we're almost there. We can start assembling the card. Um, I think it's going to look very neat, very cute. Um, I'll be right back with that paper. Okay, so we found the green and we cut it out. It's a very bright green. And now we're going to figure out where we want our grass. Let me clean this off. It's got sticky stuff all over it. Okay, it's going to have to do. Okay, so we're going to have to figure out where we want our grass. And I think I'm just going to do it just like that. I'm not going to think about it too much. Um, just get her done. So we're going to run it through.
Okay, perfect. Okay, so everything looks a hot mess until you start actually building your scene. You could come back and ink this um, a little darker just to give it a little bit of dimension and we might do that later, but I just want you to see how it starts coming together. Come on. Maybe we should start just gluing it. That'll be easier. So we're going to add our adhesive. And I'm using our glitter glue again. My fave. Okay. So we're going to put our little glitter piece down. Just press it into place. And then we're going to do the same thing with our background. And we'll just put that one into place as well and center it as best that we can. Oh, good. Okay. And then we have to figure out where we want our grass. And I think, let's see. Hmm. Maybe there. I think that's good. Okay. So let's just glue this guy down. You know what? We're going to just want to turn it just a little bit. Okay. And then this one will go here. And now we can add all of our little pieces and you can see how everything starts coming together. It doesn't matter if this hangs up off just a little bit. It's fine. It's not a big deal. We're going to elevate this house just a little bit so I can stick some stuff behind there. And then we're just going to add our pieces here and there and we'll have our little fairy maybe we'll put her here we could put one on the window she can actually be hanging out of the window maybe there And just have her somewhere flying so we're just gonna put some dimensionals on this and then i'll be right back with that okay so we use the foam tape and um it's adhered and now we're just going to start adding our little pieces i'm going to add this guy i'm not going to add any dimension to this flower let's just put that one maybe right here And um, her, we can probably just glue it here. It doesn't matter if we're covering just a little bit of that. Or we can add her here and just add a little bit of dimension to her. Which is, I think it's a cute idea too. So let's see how many we need. We don't have to put on her head, but we do have to add to the body of this thing. Okay. Let's get that off. 
and then we can just pick it up a little bit and see here's exactly where she should go which i think right there is pretty good so she's a little bit higher than the teapot which is good let's see where we're gonna put the rest of these we can put her here on the stairs that'll look cute right there we can have her buzzing around up on top to be there and then the mushrooms hmm I don't think we're going to use these mushrooms. We have the small one though, if I could ever find it. Oh, there it goes. And then we can add the little mushroom right there. It doesn't take a lot to make these little things look so cute. Okay. I think that's good. I actually think that's super cute. And then now we have to add it to our card, right? I mean, the whole purpose is to make it an easel card. So the way we do that is that we take this card and we score it in half. So then that, that'll be the part that folds up. Let me see if I find my small. Yeah, there we go. So this card is now... Four and a half, I think. Anyway, we're going to score it two and a quarter. I think that would be good enough. And then we're just going to fold it in half. Now, you always look for the part that's looking a little bit crappy. <laughs> and then this guy will be glued here. <laughs> so then the card will be mailed like this, but then when they receive it they can do this to it and then they can look at their beautiful little card so we're going to put glue on the bottom here and then we're going to try our best to make sure that our image is straight okay so let's see because that's going to make a big difference on how it shows when you bring it up. I think that's good enough. Okay, so when the recipient receives it, it'll be like this. And then they can bring it up. And maybe we'll use this as a little stopper. Right? So then it'll hold it up. Maybe we could just put a sentiment next to it. I think that'll look cute. Okay. Now, what we have to decide is what we're going to do for the bottom of this card. And I think we're going to just use the same green we used on the top. And we're going to cut it on the same dimension as this circle. So I'm going to do that off camera and then I'm going to come back we'll put it together and we should be done okay okay so this is supposed to be printable um glitter cardstock I want to see if I can stamp on it all right get our versifying let's see if we can get a pretty good stamp Just really secure that down and oh no we'll see what we can get oh okay
That looks cute. Look, I didn't even do it on camera. <laughs> Ooh. It did stamp on it. Okay, so this is the the um Pen Gear printable um glitter cardstock and it's in Walmart and I think you can also find it on Amazon. And from what I'm seeing, you can stamp on it. And I'm gonna do that one more time for the camera because it kind of sucks that I didn't. See? It's not bad. I think it moved, but we'll stamp it one more time just to see. No, it didn't. That's very good. Very cute. Now we just gotta let it dry. And then we're gonna cut it out and we're gonna put it there with the little um mushroom. I'll let that dry and um cut out the rest and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have it cut, and now I'm going to glue the mushroom to the little banner. And then we're going to put the whole banner up on some foam tape, just to add a little bit of dimension. So let's put this little guy here. And then we can add some more... Um, what do you call it? Glossy accents and stuff just to make everything pop a little bit more. You could do as much or as little as you want with this. There's really no wrong or right way to do it. Okay. So let's try to put the dimensionals on there. And I have to apologize for moving out of the frame because I forget where I'm supposed to stop <laughs> all the ink. Okay, so now you got to just decide where you want to put it. And I think right there is good so we have uh, that i don't think i'm loving the way the mushrooms are in here maybe i'll bring them down yeah i think i'm gonna like that better let's remove this and we're just going to put our mushroom a little lower so you can still see it. Let's see. I think right there is good. Oh, you could put something else there, but that's what I had. So that's what I use. That's our card. Again, we, we add, we can add some more, um, glossy accents just to make some of these little details pop out a little more which would be super cute and i'm most likely gonna do um but it's a cute little card and you can either write your sentiment in here or up here so and then when you're mailing it that's the way it mails your recipient receives it pop <laughs> very cute very nice card um, I hope you liked this video. I apologize that it's so long. It's just a lot of steps that go along the way. Um, I'll try to shorten it a little bit. Um, but I hope you like my video. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. <laughs> Have a great one, guys. Bye.